It could roar louder than a thunderclap, push a fighter jet past twice the speed of sound, and make movie history in Top Gun. This is the Pratt & Whitney TF-30, the engine that powered the legendary F-14 Tomcat. But how do you actually build an engine that can launch off a carrier deck and still fly at Mach 2? Let's step inside the process. The F-14 Tomcat was designed as a carrier-based interceptor. That meant its engines needed to do far more than just produce thrust. They had to ignite reliably in wet, salty sea air, respond instantly to throttle commands during dogfights, and sustain power for hours at high altitude. Pratt & Whitney's answer was the TF-30 turbofan, an evolution of an earlier design used in bombers, but adapted for the Tomcat's twin-engine layout. On paper, the TF-30 produced about 20,900 pounds of thrust with afterburner, enough to hurl a fully loaded F-14 off a carrier deck in seconds. At the front sat a massive fan that pulled in about 230 to 240 pounds of air per second, depending on altitude and throttle setting. That air was split into two streams. One bypassed the core to cool and boost thrust, while the rest was compressed, ignited, and turned into supersonic exhaust. But a blueprint is just a start. Turning theory into titanium, nickel, and steel requires a chain of carefully controlled steps, each one ensuring that the engine will work at sea, in combat, and on film. The journey began with raw metals strong enough to withstand heat hotter than volcanic lava. Forging presses shaped titanium billets into compressor discs, the backbone of the front section. These discs had to be tough yet light, resisting both the centrifugal pull at 10,000 revolutions per minute and the salty corrosion of sea air. Further back in the engine, nickel-based superalloys came into play. These were poured into molds, then directionally solidified so that the crystals inside lined up neatly like fibers in a rope. This gave turbine blades the ability to survive temperatures over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, well above the melting point of normal steel. The afterburner section demanded even more exotic materials. High-temperature stainless steels were used along with thermal barrier coatings and perforated liners, built to survive the fireball of raw jet fuel burned directly in the exhaust stream. Each lot of material was tested before it ever became a part. Small test samples called coupons were pulled, stretched, and bent until failure to confirm strength. Only when the pedigree was flawless did billets and castings move forward. With materials prepared, the real sculpting began. Computer-controlled machines carved compressor disks until they matched digital models within micrometers, no thicker than a human hair. The blades were locked into the disks using dovetail roots, the standard method for this generation of engines. The turbine blades received a special treatment, laser-drilled film cooling holes, typically 0.25 to 0.9 millimeters wide. These let cooler air bleed through the blades, wrapping them in a protective sheet of air called film cooling. Without this thin layer of air, the metal would melt in seconds. To strengthen surfaces, parts were shot peened. Thousands of tiny steel balls hammered each piece, adding beneficial stresses that made cracks less likely to form. Then came coatings. A ceramic layer about as thick as a sheet of paper was bonded to the hottest blades, giving them a margin of hundreds of extra degrees. Finally, every part was inspected. Blue light scanners created detailed 3D maps. X-ray and ultrasound checked for hidden voids. Only perfect pieces advanced. Here is a quick question for you. When the F-14 Tomcat first entered service, what was its top speed at altitude? Was it Mach 1.8, Mach 2.0, or Mach 2.3? Comment your guesses. We will reveal the right answer later on. The TF-30 engine was not built all at once. Instead, teams worked on separate modules, each one forming a critical part of the whole. These modules included the fan, the compressors, the combustor, the turbines, the afterburner, and the gearbox. By breaking the engine down this way, technicians could focus on one section at a time. Each piece was placed on rotating stands so that heavy components could be turned and moved with precision measured in millimeters. The bolts and fasteners holding everything together were made from Inconel, a super strong metal alloy that can handle extreme heat and pressure. Each fastener was given its own serial number, so it could be traced and tracked for the life of the engine. Inside the fan case, containment wraps made from aramid fibers, like Kevlar, were designed to catch any fragments in the rare event of a blade release. This safety feature was designed to protect both the aircraft and the pilot. 
Sensors and wiring harnesses were carefully routed outside the primary gas path to avoid heat soak and prevent chafing. Fuel spray nozzles were lined up with incredible precision, ensuring a stable burn in every flight condition. By the time each module was finished and passed inspection, it was ready to be joined with the others in final assembly. In the final assembly hall, the prepared modules were brought in on self-propelled carts and positioned with the help of laser guides. The alignment had to be exact, down to a fraction of a millimeter before any joining took place. The process began with the fan section, which was carefully connected to the compressor and the combustor. After that, the turbines and the afterburner were added in sequence. Every seal was applied with precision, since even the smallest leak could lead to serious problems once the engine was running. Technicians worked from digital build records that showed every step in detail. They logged the torque on each bolt, checked every bead of sealant, and measured clearances until everything matched the design. When the process was complete, the TF-30 measured about 5.7 meters, 18 feet 8 inches, in length and weighed roughly 4,000 to 4,200 pounds, depending on the dash number. Built to exact standards, it could still move air faster than the speed of sound, delivering the thrust that launched Tomcats from carrier decks. Before an F-14 engine could ever be cleared for flight, the TF-30 had to prove itself in punishing ground tests. Each engine was mounted in a reinforced test cell, a concrete bunker built to contain the roar of full afterburner. The first stage was called a dry spin, where the core was rotated without fuel to check for any unusual bearing noise or vibration. Once the mechanics were satisfied, ignition began. The engine lit at idle was advanced to half power and then run up to full thrust, the afterburner sending out a blast that shook the walls like heavy artillery. Passing ignition was only the beginning. Endurance trials ran the engine at near maximum thrust for hours while technicians kept a constant watch on vibration, temperature, and fuel flow. To mimic harsh carrier operations, sand, salt mist, and even ice pellets were blasted into the intake. If the engine continued to deliver steady power without failure, it earned its clearance to be installed on a Tomcat. Remember the question we asked earlier? When the F-14 Tomcat first entered service, what was its top speed at altitude? The answer is that the F-14's top speed at altitude was just over Mach 2.3. That speed was made possible by its twin TF-30 engines working together with the Tomcat's variable geometry wings. The TF-30 itself had a long lineage. Originally designed in the 1960s for the F-111 bomber, it was adapted for the Tomcat when the Navy sought a fast, long-range fleet defender. Though powerful, the engine had quirks. Pilots had to manage the throttle carefully, especially at high angles of attack, where the TF-30 was notorious for compressor stalls. It demanded respect every time they pushed the throttles forward. Later in the F-14's life, more advanced General Electric F-110 engines replaced the TF-30, solving many of those issues. But during the height of the Cold War and on the silver screen in Top Gun, it was the TF-30 that defined the Tomcat's roar. From the carrier deck to Hollywood, its legacy remains unmatched. From forged titanium billets to turbine blades cooled by air thin as a veil, the F-14's engine was as much art as science. The Pratt and Whitney TF-30 turned raw metal into more than 20,000 pounds of thrust, enough to carry Tomcats into battle and into cinema legend. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit like and subscribe for more engineering deep dives. In the comments, tell us what fascinated you more, the single crystal turbine blades or the roar of twin afterburners lighting up the night sky. Before it ruled the skies, it ruled the big screen. The F-14 Tomcat stole the spotlight in Top Gun, blazing through the clouds with jaw-dropping maneuvers. Off-screen, it was even deadlier, trusted by Navy pilots to win dogfights and survive the toughest missions. This is how it was built. The F-14 was born out of a need for versatility. The U.S. Navy needed a jet that could engage both air and surface targets while also having the ability to adapt to various mission requirements. Its design was revolutionary. With wings that could adjust their angle in flight, the F-14 could maximize speed at high altitudes and lift at low speeds. The challenge was creating a wing mechanism that could withstand the extreme forces of battle while being simple enough for pilots to control at a moment's notice. The engineers were tasked with making the F-14 both powerful and lightweight. 
The body was made from a combination of high-strength alloys and durable composites. These materials needed to withstand the intense heat and pressure of supersonic speeds and combat conditions. Titanium was used for key structural parts because of its strength-to-weight ratio, but the rest of the aircraft relied on specialized aluminum alloys to maintain the necessary balance between toughness and weight. The fuselage was reinforced with a unique framework that supported not only the wing mechanism, but also housed the complex avionics and missile systems. Building an aircraft with these advanced systems required collaboration between engineers, manufacturers, and military experts to ensure it could serve its intended purpose. Perhaps the most striking feature of the F-14 is its variable sweep wing. These wings could sweep back at speeds over Mach 2, offering optimal aerodynamics for high-speed intercept missions. In contrast, when the wings were extended, they provided increased lift and control for slow-speed operations such as landing and dogfighting. Creating this wing system wasn't a straightforward task. The engineers needed to design a robust mechanism that could handle the immense forces acting on the wings during maneuvers. The sweep system used a combination of hydraulic actuators and an advanced mechanical linkage. Pilots could adjust the wing angle instantly, and the wings would lock in place during flight. Before we move on, here's a challenge for aviation buffs. What material was used in the F-14's wing pivot mechanism to handle the extreme stress of high-speed flight? Drop your guess in the comments, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. Powering the F-14 was a pair of Pratt & Whitney TF-30 engines, which gave the aircraft its speed and agility. These engines were capable of producing over 20,000 pounds of thrust each, allowing the F-14 to reach speeds of up to 2,485 kilometers per hour. To maintain this power, the engine intakes were designed to handle large volumes of air at high speeds, ensuring the engines ran smoothly even at extreme altitudes. The challenge of these engines, however, was their maintenance. Early models of the TF-30 had reliability issues which led to modifications in later versions of the F-14, especially with the introduction of the F-110 engines, which offered improved performance and reliability. The F-14 was more than just a fighter jet. It was an advanced weapons platform. Its avionics were cutting edge for the time, featuring radar systems that could detect and track enemy aircraft from over 200 miles away. The radar was linked to the aircraft's weapon systems, allowing the F-14 to engage targets with pinpoint accuracy. One of the most iconic features was its ability to launch Phoenix, Sparrow, and Sidewinder missiles. These weapons were designed to engage targets at varying ranges, making the F-14 a versatile threat in both long-range missile combat, and close-quarters dogfights. Its advanced radar and targeting systems were linked to an autopilot system, giving pilots the ability to focus on the bigger picture while the aircraft's systems took care of specific targeting and tracking. After the design and production, the F-14 went through rigorous flight tests to ensure it met the Navy's high standards. Engineers had to test the variable sweep wing mechanism, ensuring it could deploy and retract smoothly under extreme conditions. The F-14 also went through high-speed tests to confirm it could achieve Mach 2 and above without sacrificing control. The early test flights uncovered a few issues with the engines, especially with the reliability of the TF-30. While the engines performed well at high speeds, their performance at lower speeds wasn't as consistent. This led to the decision to upgrade to the F-110 engines, which offered better low-speed handling. Once the F-14 was fully tested and the engine issues addressed, it entered full-scale production. The aircraft was built at Grumman's factory where assembly lines hummed with activity. Workers assembled the fuselage, wings, and avionic systems, while specialized teams installed the weapon systems and cockpit. Each F-14 was carefully crafted, with quality control teams conducting checks on every component. The final aircraft rolled out in the early 1970s and was immediately put into service with the U.S. Navy. With its variable sweep wings, powerful engines, and advanced radar, the F-14 quickly became a favorite among Navy pilots. It served as the backbone of the Navy's air superiority until its retirement in the 2000s, replaced by newer models like the F-A-18 Hornet. The F-14 didn't just become a symbol of military strength, it became a cultural icon. Its performance in the Gulf War and its prominent role in Top Gun made it a household name. The F-14's design influenced future fighter jets, 
including the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. Its variable sweep wing technology, in particular, was a precursor to more modern innovations in aviation. Even after its retirement, the F-14's legacy lives on in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts and military historians. Its design, engineering, and combat performance continue to inspire jet fighters of today. The F-14 underwent multiple iterations during its service, with each model improving upon the previous. The most significant update came with the F-14D variant, which introduced advanced avionics and more powerful radar systems. These upgrades made the F-14 more capable in long-range missions and target acquisition. One of the standout features of the F-14D was its digital cockpit. This provided pilots with greater precision in handling complex operations and weapon targeting, offering an edge over newer adversaries. Moreover, the engine modifications in the F-14D, especially the transition to the F-110 engines, dramatically enhanced the aircraft's reliability and low-speed performance. In addition to performance upgrades, the F-14D featured better systems for communications and mission integration, ensuring pilots had real-time access to vital intelligence during combat. With a reduced maintenance burden and improved systems, the F-14D remained a formidable asset to the Navy well into the 2000s, despite the emergence of more advanced jets. While the F-14D saw great success, its increasing maintenance costs and the need for advanced multi-role capabilities led to its eventual replacement by the F-A-18 Hornet. However, the F-14's evolutionary design continues to influence modern fighter jets, especially in areas of avionics and aircraft flexibility. The F-14 Tomcat's cultural significance goes beyond its military history. It was cemented as a pop culture icon, thanks to its starring role in the 1986 film Top Gun. In the movie, Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer famously piloted the F-14 in high-stakes aerial combat. These scenes captured the agility and power of the aircraft, introducing the Tomcat to a new generation of aviation enthusiasts. The fast-paced dogfights showcase the variable sweep wing's unique ability to transition from high-speed interception to low-speed dogfighting, making the F-14 the perfect representation of cutting-edge military aviation in the 1980s. The F-14's role in real-world combat further solidified its reputation. During the Gulf War, the F-14 successfully performed a variety of missions, including air superiority, bombing runs, and long-range missile strikes. The aircraft's Phoenix missile system was particularly instrumental in these operations, offering unmatched range and precision for engaging hostile targets. The Tomcat's portrayal in Top Gun and its real-world combat success made it synonymous with American air superiority. Even after retirement, the F-14 continues to hold a special place in aviation culture, frequently appearing at air shows and in museums, ensuring that its legacy remains intact for future generations. The F-14 Tomcat wasn't just a fighter jet, it was a masterpiece of engineering. And as for our question, what material was used in the F-14's wing pivot mechanism? The answer is titanium. Chosen for its strength, heat resistance, and ability to survive the extreme stress of high-speed maneuvers, it was one of the many innovations that made the Tomcat a legend. Now here's one more question. Would you rather have flown the F-14 in Top Gun or faced off against it in battle? Let us know in the comments, and if you love aviation history, hit subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next.